talking. All right. Hey, Rochelle, do you have your mug? Yes. Okay. Oh. All right. Please. So let's get started here. First, uh, what is the name <laughs> of the show again, Kate? I, I forgot. The Morning Roast. With the Morning Roast. Miss uh, Rochelle, just in case you forgot, like one of our students that we share decided to do a show and we just talk about random stuff, obviously. And people watch for some reason. Um, so the first thing we do is we talk about the mugs that we have. So show that mug again. What was it? Yeah. As I said, excellent. That's the right? Well, what do uh, you got? So I was given this mug from a student and it's one of my favorite mugs. And it was, <laughs> it was after they had directed for drum fest. Did you read it? Yeah. It's very um, nice. And they were like, oh my gosh, I appreciate you. Thank you for all you do. Oh my God. And so I love it. <laughs> Mine is the I'm a woman. I can be as contrary as I choose mug. I, you can't really see I have bad lighting, but it's obviously yeah, so fitting. Lighting. And I got this at a white elephant uh, with my in-laws this last Christmas. Obviously, that was the number one gift that I uh, procured. But um, Maggie Smith is on it from Downton Abbey. The reason to watch that show and the only real reason to watch that show, let's be honest. Whoa. Whoa. And that's I, I'm just saying. I mean, I've only seen one episode and I watched it because of her. Okay, it was on Netflix and then they took it away. Okay, so Kate, you are that. already like in the doghouse right now and you're just digging yourself a hole in that doghouse. I okay. am offended. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Jordan, I want to hear from you. Why do you think Down Abbey, you're saying Down Abbey is like a fantastic show that we should be watching yes. all the time? Yes, it is a British soap opera. Set I'm back. not denying a that. I didn't history. deny that. There's also really just great history in it in terms of England during that time, in terms of the rich people, in terms of the I was in the on classes. board. I was so excited. I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to devote my time to it. And then Netflix was like, ha psych. And um, took it hey, off of Netflix. Hey, hey, you have no excuse. It was on. You, you weren't like a child when it first came out. It came out like a few years ago. You could have watched point. it as it and was airing. And it sounds like you've been busy doing a lot of other things, so time is not like a problem. Are we here. getting yeah. into that? Are we getting into that oh, now? We're getting into it. Okay, but let me. Okay, so for our watchers at home, uh, Minenberg, I reached out to him and I said, e "We should do the show. It's been a while. Let's do something." He was like, "Yeah, let's do it." But I want Horner on the That's show. What I said. And <laughs> Horner at the time, being my bestie, I was like, "Yes, I love her." But now I don't. I don't know. Uh, and so Minenberg, he said. Uh, okay, we should talk about quarantine slang. And I said, no, that's a stupid topic. And so today, Minenberg brought up a new topic, which I was on board with. I am fully excited to talk about it. And it is, are fur babies better than human babies? To which- Can I clarify I just a second though? I don't know if that's exactly the topic. That's a part of the topic. Another part of the topic is like, are human are parents of human babies more normal perhaps than that is not what you babies. talked about in our uh meeting I before this I meeting so I, you will be hearing from my lawyer and my okay, agent. that's fine that's fine i i hear from them every day anyway. cannot deal with this like, hr so did not like that pivot okay, no. well we'll see where it takes us but we How can also talk about that um i have a lot of things like quarantine i i don't have human babies so i am arguing the fur baby side because i have a dog and a cat andy and ollie they're perfect i love everything about them this quarantine has they have been angels through this quarantine mm -hmm. so that's that'll be my side of the argument horner what's um, your take well, on it have I, you had both i had i have still a child a human baby and i had a fur baby <laughs> <laughs> um, no, fur babies are far superior in terms of life choices that are good life choices to have. Having a human baby is a poor life choice for anybody to make. Fight me. I would, I would like really to remind, love right now if Aria was just sitting right there. Like, yeah, well, I would like to remind yeah, yeah, yeah. Our, our panel here that we are recording my this. My husband is over here and he goes, I'm feeling good about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I will... Uh, I don't want to say I'll play the devil's advocate, but I will go ahead and disagree. 
having had both uh, a dog, several dogs over the years, and now I have two children, I'm going to contend that the human babies are superior. Now, before I make my case, I would like to acknowledge that the costs, the both monetary, physical, mental, emotionally, all of those generally are going to be on the higher side for the human babies. I acknowledge that. However, however, <laughs> the payoff, the dividends, if you will, the return on investment are oh. potentially, potentially far, far greater. Far greater. I'm glad you said potentially because that's not always the case. And also uh, the payoffs with a fur baby are always guaranteed to be amazing. Always. Always. Yeah. Well, they love hold, you hold on, no hold matter on. what. And you never have to pay for them to go to college. Exactly. Can I, and you like, can yell at them, you can discipline them, and they will always love you forever. Okay. And they will learn. They won't do things intentionally to make you mad. Like, my dog, Andy, is not going to be like, you told me, like, not to do drugs. Oh, guess what? I was at this part. Like, no, that will. I will never have that stress. Never Back. with Andy. Back. Okay. Can I just interject, though, that uh, an earlier show that we had, actually, that debated cats versus dogs and let's just remind our viewers that one of your pets is in fact a cat it is yes i'm gonna are in, cats are objectively in league with the prince of darkness so do you cat. still contend Look. that uh a cat is not also maybe a heroin addict or, or oh <laughs> i got horner to go on and so it's a really cute picture really cute well then i gotta show andy too now because that's not fair okay and, Keep talking. Uh, my Andy oh, says he's right. Mm. You need to see his face. Should we kind of um, delineate perhaps between fur babies that are cats and from Satan and fur babies that are dogs and are legitimately contending against human babies? Yeah, that's fair. Cats are terrible. I mean, that's the premise of the movie Boss Baby. So, oh, yes. That's cute. Okay. That is a great movie, by the way. I, I haven't seen the sequels, but... Uh, I think that's what we're going to do tonight, show. so... Okay, You're watching so, Boss Baby? Yeah. When you have a child, all your life is just watching stupid ass kid I, shows. That hey, has first to be so right the time. There are so many other movies you can be watching. You're but you're you, have you watched all of them? Is that just where we are now in quarantine? We're yes. at Boss Baby. We oh. literally have watched everything there is possibly to watch on Disney Plus. And then mm -hmm. also on Netflix. Because Netflix has really poor kid movie choices. Yes, they do. They do. Llama so, Llama? I mean, come on. That's like the best they got. And yeah, Magic honestly, what did you just say? Rama Llama? Llama Llama. Um, we are actually paying extra I feel like for, thank uh, you for PBS the points to fur babies with that. <laughs> the which channel? Amazon? Uh, the PBS Kids, because it has all of the uh, Daniel Tiger. All of it. Isn't that free? Well, it's free. Not on demand, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. So on we have the Fire Stick, Amazon Prime Fire Stick. So we we downloaded the PBS app. So we get it. Yep. And yeah. Daniel Tiger, lifesaver. Okay, we're digressing. Um, I'd like to share a website that I found that's kind of in favor of your position because that's how magnanimous I am. Um, let's just <laughs> or let's how just take, right we let's are. just take a, a peek at this uh, if I can find it. Uh, this was on a parenting website of all places. Okay, here we go. It's called 12 Differences. Um, is it showing up yet? No. Oh, oh it's God. happening. No? It's just your dumb face right now. That's... <laughs> I said oh, what there, I said. Okay, here Cheerios. we go. <laughs> the 12 Differences Between Your Fur Baby... And your uh, human baby. Let's see if I, I can will argue the whining is not always that cute. A Alex took Ollie to the vet, and he was gone for 45 minutes, and Andy cried the entire time. Aww. So, like, yeah, it's kind of sweet, but after 10 minutes, you're like, Andy, he's coming back. <laughs> I will say that fur babies, when they whine, it's far more pathetic. And, like, it's it's like you oh, really God, feel like you, it, it forces you to act a lot more quickly like when a, a, a human baby you can ignore you can ignore when, for a while yeah because if when i ever have children like oh. yeah. all right so look at these first three points cry. any comment on those first three 
Oh God, feeding is so easy. My cat's actually pretty cute. He like gets it everywhere. It's hilarious. But then the dog cleans it up. If a baby does that, it's really awkward to have the dog clean it up off their face. As somebody who was the food for my daughter for a full year, yeah, oh. feeding your fur baby <laughs> is way better than having to feed a human child. That's true. I spent about $25 every six months on my dog. That's that's a little bit less expensive. I'll, I'll grant that one for sure. Oh, the entertainment thing. Yikes. Yeah, my cat, like, the other day he was playing with a Starbucks straw, which I didn't even know was still a thing. I thought with the turtles we eliminated straws. But my cat had a straw, and he was so happy. Also, to turtles fair. are delicious. Come on. <laughs> to be fair, Ari is pretty happy with a cardboard box. And we have True. bought her many, many toys. And she'll play with them for like 30 seconds. But get her a cardboard box. She's good for days. Okay, I so loved, I did love that picture of her with her toy computer. That was so cute. Oh, I'm man. working. That was so, so, so my kid, he's three. I gave him a large cardboard box and a box of nails, like real nails and a hammer. Hour and a half. Just hammering he's, nails into the box. Loved every second of it. Yeah. He's three. Can they? I don't know. My, I sharp. Put together, My um, son works in a coal mine and he successfully can, you know, handle an 18 inch chainsaw as well. No problem. <laughs> We're, let's not forget who my son is, right? I mean, we talked. Did, about I this. did forget. I did forget. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so let, looking at four through ten, I mean, I don't know. You don't know because you don't know how to argue it. <laughs> I mean, they're they're true, but here's the thing: like, if you're talking to another human being, and this is where my other part of the argument comes in. And they're talking about their pet. I'll, I'll stop sharing the screen. Who cares at this point? But if they're talking <laughs> about their pet, the same way a normal adult would talk about their child, like their human child, you have to admit, pet owner or not, you are a little weirded out. A little weirded out. Um, again, having had both, and before, like, like, some parents get really offended when you're like, having a dog is very similar to having a kid and now having had both i don't really get so offended by that because it's actually fairly similar i mean the commitment obviously is different right like having having to keep a human alive and like that is much hard it's harder to have a real human child absolutely but you cannot deny that there are a lot of parallels like I needed Aria to get off my lap because I was trying to work and like conference with my AP kids today. And so I just took her binky and I threw it across the room and I said, go get it. And she did. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a lot of parallels here, right? True. So, I've actually had to ask my wife more than once, are we playing fetch with our kid? Are we, I mean, is that happening? Yeah, I, I, I'll concede that, but Let's oh, give a funny. scenario here. You're having a dinner party of some kind and inviting your friends and somebody who you invited ask, hey, can I bring my kid? You might pause, but if they said, hey, can I bring my cat? You'd be like, heck yes, bring your cat. Hard pass. Hard can pass. But cat? did they say, hey, can I bring my dog? What kind of dog is it? It matters. Does it? Yes. Well, yes. I would say yes to all dogs. What about one of those like miniature chihuahuas that's perpetually shaking? First of all, oh, no. Bijou was a chihuahua, long hair, yes. thank God. Oh, Minenberg. Um, and he was adorable. I keep forgetting that younger kids watch the show, so I have to watch my language. You're but so yes, all dogs, all dogs, little dogs, big dogs, all dogs are welcome at any dinner party I am throwing. Cats okay. are never welcome okay. at any time in my life, period. I appreciate the consistency. Wold, your thoughts. Okay. Uh, that would be weird. However, I did just get my cat a backpack. And you might be thinking, like, a backpack the cat can wear? No, I mean, I wear the backpack, and the cat goes with me on walks. And oh. Oh. it because he was sad when we ta would take Andy on walks, and I was like, let's try this. Some cats go adventuring, and he's oh. very social. He's very adventurous and outgoing. And it's fun. And so, I don't know. He might be the kind of cat that I take to dinner parties. But, I, yeah, so. Huh. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Let's just face <laughs> the fact that we're judging you not so silently right now about that. I'm okay with that. I am okay with that because I literally bought it and I was like, am I being this cat owner? But then I thought, time doesn't matter. 
also why should people's opinions matter at this point in time and so i have walked him around seattle and i thought it was gonna i thought like i'd get judgment but so far everyone who we've been like within six feet of they have been like oh my god and you have a cat in a backpack that is so cool like people are very understanding here so seattle people no question um, yeah. Can I ask this? Another scenario, speaking of judgment, what about when you're going to the park and you see the person who's got like a very expensive stroller and they have like a, 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 a Yorkie in there? I mean, come on, guys. What are we talking about here? I, I, I do the judge pet. the pet strollers. I am I a pet, pet stroller. strollers. Yeah, that's the fur dog. baby. That is the fur baby parent I'm talking about that I need to just know that's not the same. It's not the same. But, 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 what if their their dog has, like, walking issues? And, like, no, this it doesn't. It doesn't. Andy, when he gets <laughs> old, I'll, like, I'll get him a thing so I can pull him around, like, because yeah. I love him. And okay, he... okay, I will leave the old dogs out of it. Fine. You, They can okay. have their strollers. They okay. can have whatever they need. Thank but that's you. Not what we're that is not what we see. We see like just like this. No, windy, it's no. That well, that's where that's where, mile, that's where I'm like, mm, that's too much with the tiny little dog that they caught. I did have a I did have someone who showed up to a theater event with a tiny, tiny little dog. And I kind of was like, um, dogs aren't allowed in schools. And she got kind of uppity with me. And she said, this is a, a support animal. And I want to be like, is it like, is it? what kind is of support? It? And so she took this animals. trembling little thing in the theater and I was like, this just seems like a bad idea, but I had to let her. And so that I had quite, I had questions, but people just pull that out. And the thing, I think there should be something with support animals because I do think there are animals that help you as humans survive, but they should have like some sort of collar just so that we can be like, oh no, that's a legit one. Like you need that because you have health problems i don't know just something that we can be like you don't just want to cuddle your dog in a theater yeah like a seeing eye dog or yeah. therapy dogs that go to like the hospitals and stuff they like go through actual training and they wear yes. those beautiful vests and, yes. I love them. and they are working they are doing a job and they are yeah. important yes but they are just I and i knew I, I knew i had a manager who like would come in and he would bring his dog and it was just like a, a food <laughs> place and he wasn't supposed to but he'd be like it's a support dog and he would lie about it and we couldn't do anything but you, yeah, so I think there's uh, there's been a lot of uh, a little too much flexibility on the support animal thing lately, especially if, I don't know if you've seen those stories about the airplanes where the where the person brings their support peacock on the yeah. plane. Like, yeah. where do we as a society need to draw that line? And and, and this kind of goes into the fur baby thing because if you're on that airplane. I mean, I've I've been the parent and I've had you know the kid behind me kicking my seat. I don't know if I'd rather have the support animal or the, uh, and I'm not saying animal like the regular dog. I'm saying the support, you know, goat. Wait, wait, wait. Are, you're saying you'd rather have the child kicking your seat I'd than no, an animal? No, I'd want the child kicking my seat. But, but that's what the, those are the options. You get crying or kicking child. Like, those are the various childs on planes. Which okay, makes me, if, okay. if so, when I ever have a kid, I will never take them on a play plane because of how harshly I've been like oh my god your kid is crying and kid I've had a kid kick my seat for five hours non-stop oh. and I I I was that person who had to be like can you have your kid stop and they're like oh sweetie please stop and I just want to be like that's not that's not doing anything and I just had to endure the kicking of my seat for five hours so I, I think I would rather have the kid what were I you saying Horner? No, Horner what were you saying <laughs> I said, I literally never actually had a kid kick my seat, which is really surprising, though I've been had kids behind me. But I definitely have judged parents very harshly uh, with crying kids on planes. And then I was that parent when trying to go visit my grandparents so she could meet her great grandparents um, and or go visit my sister I hadn't seen in like two years, like so she could meet her niece and I could meet my nephew. And uh, I definitely cried both times because she was so awful on the plane. So. Now you need to do that when she's like 18, take her senior trip to Europe and just like have a meltdown on the plane. That'd be great. <laughs> but I still would pick the kid over the exotic support animal. I think the exotic support animal is preposterous. You do not need a support peacock on the airplane. I will sit next to a peacock any day. 
as opposed to a child behind me who is kicking my seat. I'd get too hungry. I'd get too hungry. I think it depends on my title. <laughs> so as I become a parent, I become more um, germaphobe, more of a germaphobe. So weird animals where I don't know what shots they've had, what diseases I can get from them. That's going to be a problem for me now. And I guess I would take the crying kid. But like when I didn't have kids and I wasn't a germaphobe, one, kids are the worst on the plant. Like I can't, I can't, it's the worst. And two, animals are great. And if I get diseases, whatever, I'm young, I'll be fine. So <laughs> I guess, you know, 25 year old Rochelle will be fine with it. But 36 year old Rochelle is like, no, give me the crying kid. Fair enough. Well, I think, um, I think we've kind of settled the argument that human babies are are better. Um, I think we all are in agreement now. You are actually we, the worst. Can we transition just for I mean, a moment? Wait, hold to, on, but we, we did settle the argument that he, that human babies are not as good as fur babies. Yes, we did settle that topic. I, I just feel this like this time I, it's two against one, Minenberg. When you okay. proposed this topic, I was like, I'm out. She's got Arya. But when she said fur babies, I was like. I knew she was going to say that, but the thing is, like, it is it is a little bit subjective because I have two gems of sons. I mean, they're fantastic. It's not a fair discussion. I can't say my sons and the way they, uh, you know, bring joy is, you know, indicative of every other parent's experience. It's not. So I can't make that. I can only make the case for myself. But, I just uh, have a really good life, and things are awesome for me right now. Blah, blah, blah. What? I'm sorry, I have two of the best pets in the world. Like, what do you? What is this? Oh my god, this! I'm argument. sorry, we my can't do animals not. anymore. It just makes me so angry with you. And you have brought up yet another bird you want to consume. We've had bald eagles. I'm pretty sure we've had owls, and now we have peacock. Do I need to put you on some PETA watch list? Like, what is watch happening watch in your house? I, look, for centuries, human beings have eaten peacocks. That's a fact, okay? We all know that. I don't think it's a fact. I don't think it's a fact. It is. Study study uh, the Middle Ages in Europe. They ate peacocks. Also, if you look at uh, <laughs> The Office, Dwight, Dwight mentions eating owl meat several times. So I can only contend that it's probably a the good idea. comedic I show that isn't, he's not a real person. Do you understand that? It's not a real document. It's a mockumentary. It's like when they make a documentary, but it's it it's still scripted. seems it's like funny. it's true, though. I'm sorry that no one has told you that. It's like Michael Scott is not a real person. OK, but let me ask you this. If you were really hungry for a, a delicious brunch and you had the option of eating a bald eagle egg omelet, would you not take it? No, no because, because I'm, I'm an American. American. There you go. Yeah. Again, hey. we have FBI. Hold on, oh hold on, Horner. <laughs> let me. You'll back me up on this. Evidence do did, we need? Horner, did not Benjamin Franklin try to get the national bird to be the turkey? Why are you yeah. saying it to Horner? Like I don't. You know, I'm also a history teacher. I also know things. You are actually. But she is the A push teacher. Yes, so I'm just yes. saying, like, if if we can eat the the proposed national bird why can't he, we uh, he was probably crazy from the syphilis like we yeah. can't take that into account the turkey is the most hideous we've also talked about this the Ooh. turkey is the most hideous bird yeah you cannot like, eat a bald eagle he also he might have been drunk I mean, and yes. he might have just been like the turkey haha -ha. like i saw one in my backyard the other day and everyone's like no, oh, he really, really liked the turkey he thought it was a majestic creature it is a majestic look look for the record i have not yeah. ever eaten a bald eagle but if somebody put a plate in front of me and it was legal, I'd give it a shot. That's all I'm saying. Just all I'm saying. You are oh, offensively un-American. That's yeah. the that's the, I don't the know point. If I can associate to, with you to, to stir that pot and to get Kate worked up, and I'm succeeding as always. Always. It's too easy. I, oh my God, you're the worst. Thank you. The worst. <laughs> the worst. I, you know what I should? I need a mug. Okay, speaking of mugs, I should have a mug that just says the worst. No one is buying you this mug. Like, I think every time we do a show, you're like, I really need this shirt. I really need this. Like, no, we don't have a PayPal thing. We don't have a... <laughs> I have to use that buy mugs. You, your kids worship you too much. I The Instagram thing, which I thought was very nice, where students said things, I... I 
I found out about the day before the W, so I was super jazzed, and I saw the Minnenbergs, and someone was like, he's so kind. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. Clearly, this is a troll. Like yeah, All the things your kids said about you, I was like, they don't know you at all. I didn't get to watch this. I don't have the Instagrams. Mm. The Instagrams. Mm. Well, there was there was one. That's the only one I remember. I thought about screenshotting it and sending it to you, but I was like, nah, because yeah, this one this said, is "Oh, he's so funny," and I was like, "Wrong. That what? is just wrong." He's I funny mean, to laugh to, at, like it's offensive humor, maybe. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't get it. They, whatever Kool Aid you give your kids. Yeah. Like, wow. It's I did. The off brand. It's the off brand because it's cheaper. It's the off brand Kool Aid. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I'd have to get it. I don't know, but now that you've said this, I feel like someone will get you that mug for Horner and be like, I want you to have it because Minnenberg wanted it. But maybe that means you want a gift because of Rochelle, the kids just shower her with presents. It's it my is, love language. I mean, mine too, but dang. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's not my love language. It but, must be uh, your let's syllabus. do a little comparison. Um, pre-holiday, pre-winter break haul. What, what would you say the monetary value was that you got from your students? Give it a number, Horner. I don't know, like 50 bucks? I don't know. Including That's, Starbucks cards? He takes a pallet of stuff home. I, I had three bags. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she had a huge box. Yeah, well, I would have had a box. But there's three bags and then gift cards, not, not including gift cards. But then you're always like, what am I going to do with these gift cards? I guess I'll give them to my wife, the mother of the boys I love so much. <sighs> you don't use your gift cards? I just give them to my wife, yes. Yeah, I know. It's wasted. Stop giving Minenberg gifts, everyone. That's why I I don't. No, I don't. Give it to me and Horner. I I, will appreciate it. Yeah. She works in a hospital, okay? So, and there's there's a Starbucks in the hospital. So I have to go out of my way to get Starbucks. It's like in her area. So, you know, Starbucks is right at the entrance of our school. He is merciless about Starbucks. Haven't you seen that one time he made fun of me? I did. One time. <laughs> the one he time. made he made fun of me. Just one time in particular, I screamed at him. And, like, I think Sarah Norris was like, oh, that's what all the yelling was about. <laughs> it was a good one. It was a good one. Because I was not having it that day. I wanted my chai, and I didn't want your lip. Mm-mm. <laughs> I, I, I basically made the case that because she was drinking that one chai latte, she was never going to be a homeowner. Yeah. That's what I, oh, I you're think one that of was those. my word. Those are my words, right? Ish. Like it, it still keeps me up at night. It just makes it fills me with rage. <laughs> hey, you can't be you can't be kept up at night by what boomers say. Right? I don't They're actually get confused. kept up at night because I have fur <laughs> babies. I see yeah, he's gonna die night. soon. His opinion doesn't matter. Like, just it's, ignore him. <laughs> it's toxic masculinity. What can we say? Yeah, like, let's be honest. And I'm not a boomer, Horner. I am from the greatest generation. I'm almost 97 years old, okay? <laughs> it's like something a boomer would say, I'm though. A boomer. That's exactly what a boomer would say. <laughs> I am not a boomer. Oh, respect me. Oh, man. This is the worst insult I've ever been called in my life. Oh, God. It's actually pretty hypocritical, because if they're whining, they are acting like the people that they're judging, the younger generation. Right? It's totally yeah, But boomers don't understand hypocrisy because that's how they've lived their entire lives. Do as I say, but not as I do. I like it. It's a good way to go. You boomer. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. you don't realize that you're a boomer. You literally, what, you call it the Instagrams? <laughs> You did. I, you did call the Instagrams. Oh, no, I, said I have like a instant. that's how much I was redneck jokes, but like boomer jokes. If you if you <laughs> say okay, I'm not a boomer. You might be a boomer. <laughs> if you call the Instagrams, you might be a boomer. <laughs> if you're getting upset with me saying this, you might be a boomer. <laughs> I love it. Well, you're going to have to show me that video because I don't have access. So, well, can you send that to me or screenshot it? <laughs> what video? What are you talking on about? On the Instagram. Yeah. No, that's it's gone. It's, okay, so it's gone because it was one of those, like, 24-hour things. So you'll never see it. Dang it. What a world we live in, people. What I'm sorry. I literally, I was like, I should screenshot it and send it to David. And then my mind went, nah. <laughs> 
I, I don't mean, know why I was feeling so mean, but I just was like, it's like you're thinking about him eating bald eagles. <laughs> and it made me upset as an American. Well. <laughs> I need to limit my contact with you because I also, I don't want to be investigated. Not that I would ever eat the national bird. I would never right. do that. A freedom. It probably but it tastes, I like the taste of freedom. I'm sorry. Forgive me. <laughs> like, it's delicious. Oh, my God. <laughs> No, I think we have gone way off topic with this, but this was fun. We should do this again. I agree. Final thoughts before we call it a day, people. Um, I thought the show was you guys just like debating stuff, but now I've learned it's really just roasting David, and I really enjoy that. Oh yeah, it's super it's, fun. You know, a lot of psychologists have proven uh, have, have maintained a lot of studies that insulting and making fun of me actually releases certain chemicals in the brain that act as an antidepressant so i've actually I'm glad to know that people are you know, studying you and the effect well, of laughing at you <laughs> yeah was this a study on narcissism uh, that's a that's that's a word yes <laughs> um i i don't know i this was good my final thoughts are i might have kids someday they're pretty cute holding aria when she was a baby baby was so sweet they smell good they're soft but my cat and dog are also soft, and they're pretty great, and they don't keep me up at night, and I won't have to pay for them to go to college. So I'm just going to enjoy the dink life, buying what I want, which is right now silly crafts. I have been watercoloring. I have a paint by numbers of Andy and Ollie. I'm very excited to finish it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm excited. I don't know. I feel like with these videos, I get some validation. Like with the stuffing, I still feel happy to know that like I can say I like stovetop stuffing and have people support me and not shame me. So I'm excited to see what people say with this video. We'll see. I guess we'll have to see. I'll post it online. I'll share the link with you all. Um, and uh, <laughs> hopefully we'll we'll settle the, this argument once and for all. I I'd like to hear from some more parents. Well, from my from my family who want me and Alex to have a kid because look, we're adorable. We'll have an adorable kid. But goodness, like I feel like they're just gonna be like, but can you please like <laughs> dog and cats are cute, but child, I don't after this quarantine just seeing how what parents have to deal with. Oh, I don't know. And it's also I would like to point out, I thought about this earlier. It is very different for you and Rochelle to compare having a child because of our societal standards of mothers and fathers. Uh, our societal standards, are you saying I fall into the societal standards? Yes. We're back into it. People, listen, <laughs> I, I, oh, no. I do not, listen, I did not give my body the way Rochelle did to support the physical well-being of the child. I can see that the mother does far more physically, mentally, and emotionally at those early stages. Absolutely. But... I was I'm like, very involved was there a follow-up or are you just agreeing with me? That's a first. No, I'm not just agreeing with you. I'm just saying I at this point, I'm very much involved in the in the boys. I'm not I'm not one who says I don't change diapers. I'm right there in there. I didn't say you weren't involved. I'm just saying like but people look at you differently and it's a difference in careers and stuff like that. People have been telling me like, oh, when you have kids, you'll have to give up the theater program. And I'm like, what? What? Yeah, people compliment Andy on like how good of a father he is. And they're like, oh my gosh, isn't he just so great? Aren't you just so glad you have him as a husband for doing all these things? I'm like, where are my compliments? Like what? nobody ever says, oh, you're such a great mother. They just like expect me to like be good at this, which I am. But still, I would like the compliments. The so expectations are different. The expectations are different, regardless if you share equal workload, with, which Andy and I do, because I would never be in a partnership with somebody who would not share equally in this parenting journey. So oh, I told Alex when we have a kid, I'm never doing. Equal. Yes. I told That's Alex a fair if, point. if we have now, a kid, now, I'm never doing anything. I have to remind you that you said on video that fur babies are better than human babies. So I, I, I you know. I just have to remind the audience that uh, that was said, but um, I, I stand by it. And when so, they so are, as may well. get <laughs> limited. But Happy Mother's Day, by the way. Postpone, you know, delay it. I see, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get the one day. <laughs> <laughs> the one day. Hey, listen, I tell my students that on their birthday they come in. Do you know it's so and so's birthday? Can we sing? I'm like, no. We can, however, call their mother and thank their mother. That's what I say. Because without mom and all the work mom did, that kid would not be brought into this world. 
So thank you, Mom. Kind of like double down on like I'm just this great guy. No, stop. Just accept. Just accept that things are different for men and women when it comes to parenting. And no matter how good you are in terms of equity in your home, societal standards still make it dif more difficult for a woman. Just I accept. Agree. I will accept that. I will accept that. I think it's it's appropriate to end this on a, on a note of agreement. <laughs> um, so maybe we'll do this again. We'll see how our our schedules shake out. But until then. Thank you both. It's a pleasure as always. Have a great rest of your week, okay? Yeah. Bye, you say, guys. Say, say hello to your human child. I don't really care about the, the dogs. <laughs> Rude.